it's just after six in the morning on a Saturday perfect time to make a video so one of the biggest issues with an ESP8266 is their lack of pins you've got eight good digital GPIO pins basically that can be used for anything PWM or whatever uh, you've got one bad one which is D0 which can't be used for interrupts or anything like that and then you've got the analog input which is pretty nerfed um, and then you've got a TX and an RX pin and that's pretty much it uh, but in this video I want to take a look at the fact that you can use the TX and RX pin as GPIOs which now gives you 10 GPIOs, 10 good GPIOs which is a pretty significant improvement I haven't seen anybody do it with a D, like an ESP A266-12 module I'm sure it has been done, I just haven't come across it uh, it's a trick from like that you see people use on the ESP zero ones to get I squared C devices working, but uh, yeah, it it all came from uh, a viewer called Bornark Bornak, um, trying to get I squared C on these types of displays. But if you've used one of them before, you know that basically it uses all the pins of uh, of an ESP A two six six other than uh, analog in and the two TX pin, or TX and RX pins. Uh, Bornark has an amazing video where he reduces the amount of pins that this uses down to three and uses external ICs to look after like the clock and latching of them. It It's excellent. It's linked up here. Definitely watch it. But uh, I wanted to see would it be possible to get I squared C on this device without uh, without needing external logic and the fact that I can use TX and RX pins here means that it probably is so let's take a look at it one thing that I hadn't talked about and this is kind of an afterthought now but um is I haven't talked about what you lose so basically you lose the ability to use the serial monitor in your sketch and you can't write to the serial monitor or you can't send in commands either. Now, I guess if you only used one of TX or RX you would be able to keep one of those functionalities for yourself but from an upload perspective once the hardware isn't getting in the way and I talk about it a little bit in the next clip uh, you should be fine um, because it'll be brought into programming mode when it's time to be programmed so it's completely separate from your sketch so you don't need to worry about not being able to program it again so for a quick demonstration I'm just gonna switch back to instead of using a display I'm just gonna use two LEDs uh, I did notice that I can't program it with the two LEDs in I guess it's been pulled too low um, so that's one thing to uh, look out for. I could program it with the I squared C shield in but uh, yeah definitely one thing to check out. To enable the TX and RX pins as GPIO you just need to run these methods or this method. So pin mode, uh, the pin that you want so pin 1 is TX and pin 3 is RX and then you want to pass in function 3 and that changes it so that it's now uh, GPIO and you can use it for whatever you want so I'm setting both of them here as outputs I'm setting pin 1 as analog write of 100 which is a pretty dim analog write so you can see that it's remaining constantly dim there so we can use it for PWM and then I'm just doing a standard loop for uh, showing that it blinks so you can use digital write with it too and for how I set up using the display or the I squared C of it, I'm using an example from the ESP8266 and ESP32 OLED driver for SSD1306 by Daniel Eichhorn. So basically, this is their example as is, but uh, with a couple of changes. So my display is this SH11061. Um, so instead of initializing the 
the display or using the constructor in a global variable like this, I'm going to define a pointer instead. So this is more like a placeholder for it because inside the constructor code, it's probably setting pin modes for us. And we don't want to do that until we've had a chance to convert them to GPIO pins. So uh, we have the placeholder here and then we initialize it using display equals new sh1106 wire. Uh, so it's the same constructor as the above, but um, just used a little differently. And then the only other change that we needed to make was that uh, what would have been here in the example before is display dot init and that would have been everywhere. Uh, so you just need to do a find and replace on display dot and replace it with display dash arrow or whatever greater than sign whatever replace it with this. Um, so that's just because we're using it as a pointer instead of um, instead of the other way. So I actually don't know what this is called, but uh, yeah, you need to do it. And yeah, that's that's it. As you can see, it's working working okay there. So um, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it interesting. And if anybody has any reasons why they think this is a bad idea, let me know. Or if it's a good idea, that'd be great too. And uh, I'll catch you next time. All right, bye-bye.